Beginning in about 2010 and uh, through now in 2014, there have been a variety of important discoveries in human genome research that have led us to believe that many of the most important diseases, the diseases that involve cancer, autoimmunity, um, neurological diseases, are associated with uh, sequence variation in the gene regulatory elements of the genome. So these, this would include enhancers, these large enhancer domains that we call super enhancers, and these are the binding sites for the transcription factors that are controlling cell identity, the transcription factors that control the approximately half of all the genes that are expressed in any one cell type. So we've come to realize that a tremendous amount of the human sequence variation associated with disease is actually impacting the transcriptional control of cell state in many of the most interesting cells in medicine. So with this as a background, what we'd like to understand is how these alterations in the genome lead to transcriptional misregulation, which has as its consequence these diseases. And so to focus on this, we've been uh, looking at cancer as an example. In cancer cells, uh, the tumor cells are often doing um, genome rearrangement experiments. Uh, they'll modify, they'll acquire mutations that are then selected by the tumor cells uh, give them survival capabilities. And the kinds of mutations that we see uh, and have been observed by many investigators sequencing the genomes of tumor cells involve translocations of DNA where enhancers will be translocated to new genes, often oncogenes. They'll involve single point mutations that alter transcription factor binding. And in some cases, they involve the overexpression of transcription factors that then go to genes and turn them on inappropriately. So with, with this background, this new knowledge that mutations are arising in the genome that cause these diseases, we're trying to understand what are some of the underlying mechanisms. The CHIP-seq types of experimental data that we can do have led us to believe that in tumor cells, some of these alterations, many of these alterations, are leading to the formation of what we call super enhancers at oncogenes. And so most tumor cells are developing these super enhancers at genes that are known to be key drivers of tumor cells. They'll do this by translocation, they'll do it with point mutations, they'll do it with overexpression of transcription factors. And this has led us to the idea that there may be drugs that we can develop that are modifying the transcription apparatus in some way that the tumor cells will be especially vulnerable to. And what we found is that indeed the super enhancers that the tumor cells develop to overexpress many key oncogenes are very vulnerable. The super enhancers are vulnerable to drugs that can target many different components of the transcription apparatus. So we didn't anticipate this but we think it's a special vulnerability that tumor cells have. Um, there are a variety of existing drugs and drugs that are now under development that specifically affect either the transcription factor cofactors or regulators of chromatin that seem to confer that the tumor cells are very sensitive to these particular drugs because of the vulnerability that super enhancers have. Um, and these super enhancers that in turn have been created by the tumor cells actually give them this vulnerability. This is unexpected, but many of the oncogenes on which uh, tumor cells depend, um, the tumor cells have become addicted to high levels of these oncogene products. And there's a phenomenon that's long been understood called transcriptional addiction. Um, but now mechanistically we understand that transcriptional addiction is dependent on super enhancer formation. We now know what many of the components are of these super enhancers. And so for drug developers who are interested in exploiting these um, 
these super enhancer vulnerabilities, we can now focus on specific proteins, develop drugs against those specific proteins, and then see if specific tumor cells are susceptible to those drugs. And our initial results look very promising. Um, we have a variety of specific drugs against specific super enhancer components to which some of the most important uh, cancer cells uh, are vulnerable. In the future, we'll have to see if um, these drugs can be useful in the clinic. So they're not quite ready for phase one clinical trials. There's a process called medicinal chemistry that we need to go through where the initial drug-like molecules have to be optimized for um, their behaviors in, in the bloodstream. We'll have to see whether these drugs may be useful for oral delivery or whether they'll need to be delivered through the bloodstream. And uh, what we hope is that in the coming year or two, we'll be able to get some of these first drugs into phase one clinical trials to see if they're safe for human use. Our laboratory collaborates with um, individuals who have experience in medicinal chemistry, individuals who are oncologists who treat patients, and so we have this very nice collaboration between labs that are able to do the chemistry, labs that understand cancer, and our own lab where we have this deep knowledge of transcriptional control. And those, those kinds of laboratories actually exist in a variety of different universities in many different countries. Um, we see now that drug developers, uh, individuals with chemistry expertise, are beginning to collaborate with other laboratories who understand transcription and chromatin control. And those collaborations are moving into more clinical settings with companies that are being developed to uh, take advantage of these new insights. One of the areas that's been particularly amenable to drug discovery has involved these transcriptional cofactors that actually play roles in modifying histones, um, that play roles in binding to histones, and that are accessory factors for the transcription apparatus. So many of these components are kinases, they're, um, they're enzymes that modify various components of the transcription apparatus or the histones that are in the local vicinity, and they're quite amenable to drug development because they have pockets or they have enzymatic activities that are useful for drug developers in conceptualizing how they may develop either uh, activity-based or structure-based small molecules for potential clinical use. I mentioned that we're very focused on cancer as one of the key diseases that we'd like to attack with transcriptional therapies, but the transcriptional misregulation that we know occurs in cancer has analogs in the transcriptional misregulation that leads to various autoimmune diseases and that we suspect leads to a variety of other important diseases. So our hope is that the kinds of concepts that we've been developing to understand transcriptional misregulation in cancer are also conceptually similar in the transcriptional misregulation, for example, that occurs in autoimmune diseases. And that means that some of the drugs that are under development that attack the transcription factors or cofactors and chromatin regulators may also be valuable for use in clinical settings for many non-cancer diseases.